Since the electric guitar was first introduced in the 1930s, it radically changed popular music. It directly led to the creation of blues, rock and metal music. But how does it work? Well, let's get to know the basic features of the guitar first. Down here we have the base of the guitar, which is called the body. This is usually made from a single piece of hardwood, such as mahogany, ash or maple. Attached to the body we have the neck. This is sometimes carved from a single piece of wood, but more often than not, it's a separate piece of wood which is attached by bolts. At the top of the guitar we have the headstock. This is where the strings are attached and tuned. We'll come back here later. Let's talk about the strings for a second. A standard guitar has six strings which are tuned to E, A, D, G, B, E. You'll notice that the strings get thinner as we go from left to right. The first three strings are made from braided wound cable, while the last three strings are made from a single piece of metal similar to cheese wire. In order to install the strings, we have to travel to the back of the guitar. Let's move this panel out of the way so we can see what we're doing. The strings are fed through holes in the back of the guitar. Each string is wound around a ring of metal or plastic which holds the string securely inside the guitar. The strings emerge from a mechanism mounted on the front of the guitar which is called a bridge. We'll revisit this piece later. Let's follow the path of the string up the body and the neck of the guitar. At the top of the neck is a piece of plastic or metal called the nut. It has six notches cut into it to hold the string securely in place. Finally, the strings make their way to the headstock where they are fed through a hole in a tuning peg. Each string is wound around its own peg several times to hold it securely in place. The tuning pegs can be rotated, increasing the tension on the strings which creates a higher pitched note. To tune the peg, we use a gear system called a machine head, which is located at the back of the headstock. A machine head has two major parts, a handle called a button, which is attached to a worm gear, and a cog, which is attached to the tuning peg. Notice that the button rotates many times faster than the tuning peg cog. This gives the musician much finer control when they're tuning the guitar. The guitar is played by plucking the strings. This can be done with fingers, but typically a piece of plastic called a plectrum or a pick is used. The string vibrates between two tension points, the bridge at one end of the guitar and the nut at the top of the neck. We can change the note of the string by placing some pressure behind these metal ridges, which are called frets. This effectively reduces the length of the string, which can actually vibrate, which produces a higher pitched note. Each fret on the fretboard represents an increase of one note on the string. Fret markers on the top and the side of the fretboard allow the player to keep track of which frets are being played. All of this tension from the strings constantly pulls on the neck, which can warp the wood over time. To counteract this, a metal truss bar is fitted inside the neck. Most truss bars are also adjustable, allowing for the bending in the wood to be counteracted over time. Let's go back to the body of the guitar. This is the bridge, which we talked about earlier. It has several small components called saddles, which allow the string's height and position to be subtly adjusted. This is useful if you want to get rid of some annoying noises, like buzzing on the strings. Now this specific guitar is being fitted with a vibrato system, also known as a tremolo or a whammy bar. This can be freely rotated out of the guitarist's way while they play. If the whammy bar is pressed towards the guitar, it causes the whole bridge to tilt forwards. This loosens the tension on the strings and creates a diving noise. This effect can often be heard in guitar solos. <laughs> Now most of the components I mentioned so far are common to all guitars, so what makes an electric guitar so special? Well let's take a look inside. This panel is called a pick guard. Not all guitars have these, some guitars move the access panel to the back of the body. Under the pick guard we find several of these components called pickups. They consist of a plastic bobbin, six small magnets, one for each string, and a reel of enameled copper which has been wrapped around the bobbin thousands of times. Now you may remember from school that moving a magnet through a coil of wire creates a charge in the circuit. If we reverse the direction of the magnetic field, it reverses the flow of current. This is called induction, and it's the mechanism that we use to generate the majority of our electricity. When the metal strings on an electric guitar vibrate, they influence the magnets below them, causing the magnetic field to move up and down through the coils. This creates an alternating current in the coils which perfectly matches the frequency of the string's vibration. In essence, we've just translated the sound waveforms into electrical signals. Now we can send that signal to an amplifier and turn it back into sound. But first, we're going to pass the signal through a few more components inside the guitar. Here we have the control pots. 
they're attached to knobs which allow the guitarist to affect the volume of the sound. Most guitars will also have at least one control pot to affect the tone of the sound too. Note that all of these components are normally connected by a whole mess of wires, but I've removed them just so we can actually see what we're looking at. Next to the control pots, we also have a selector switch. This allows the guitarist to select which pickups will be used at any point. Different pickups produce different tonal qualities depending on their design and their position on the body. This guitar uses a single coil pickup, but some guitars have two different coils in opposite directions each. This is called a humbucker because it removes the humming noise from the guitar pickup. So finally, we're ready to send the signal out of the guitar. To do this, we're gonna use a quad inch patch cable known as a jacklade. We're gonna plug one end of this into the guitar and the other end is gonna go into an amplifier. That's electrically powered and could turn the signal back into sound via a speaker. I won't go into too much detail about amplifiers. They vary massively in design and that's a topic for another time. But most models will have some things in common. They'll have several knobs to control the tone and the volume of the guitar. They also have multiple channels of operation. There's usually a clean channel which produces an unadulted sound. However, most amps also support an overdrive or distortion channel. This channel clips the high and the low end off the frequency of the waveform, producing a signature electric guitar growl, which is used in almost all rock, pop and metal music. My name is Rob Dickinson and I'm a 3D artist. If you enjoyed this explanation and you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please consider hitting the subscribe button.